hey guys, webcam technology really hasn't advanced very far in the past 10 years. So I say let's build our own. Grab your Raspberry Pi Zero W kit, a Raspberry Pi high quality camera, and let's get on it. So first off, I want to give credit where credit is due. This is not my project. I discovered a guide put together by a guy named David Hunt. I'll put a link to his blog post with the original instructions in the description below. What I intend to do with this video is clarify these instructions for the absolute beginner. So even if you're unfamiliar with Linux and Raspberry Pi, you still should be able to do this project very easily. To get started, you will need a Raspberry Pi Zero. And I'll provide a link to the exact kit that I'm using in this video and it will have all of the necessary components except for the micro SD card for some reason. So you'll also need one of those. I recommend a class 10 card. Mine is 8 gigabytes in space and that's plenty for this project. Finally, you'll need a Raspberry Pi high quality camera and any C-mount lens. Though I recommend the 6mm 3 megapixel lens. I'll put a link to that lens in the description below. And I will be showing a few different lens examples later on in this video. First, let's flash our micro SD card. Personally, I like to use a fresh, empty micro SD, but I don't have a new one on hand, so I'm going to use Mini Tool Partition Wizard to format an old micro SD card to a single FAT32 partition. If you have a brand new micro SD card, this step won't be necessary. Once that's done, head over to download the Raspberry Pi OS Lite image. There will be a link in the description. When the zip file is finished downloading, flash the image to your micro SD card with Bellina Etcher. Insert the micro SD card into your Raspberry Pi Zero, and now we can put the whole thing together. I got this kit from Amazon, and everything in the kit snaps together really easily. Just make sure you use the Pi Zero ribbon cable for the camera, because the Pi Zero won't take the full-size ribbon cable that comes with the high-quality camera. There really isn't a good way to mount the camera module to the case, so I rigged up a piece of PVC molding and used really short screws to affix the camera to the molding. Then I used Gorilla Glue to adhere the molding to the case lid. I would show you how I built all of this, but it involves using a saw and a drill. And the last time I used tools on camera, too many people became 7th grade shop teachers in the comments, and that annoyed me. So they're the reason you have to figure this part out on your own. Mini rant over. My mounting rig was left with this blank white spot, so I filled it with words to remind me not to stress over stupid things. And I just used an L bracket to mount the camera rig to my wall. This camera is great that it has such a small footprint, but I'm getting ahead of myself because at this point we need to build the OS and drop in the camera software. So plug in a power cable to the bottom micro USB port, plug in the OTG adapter with a keyboard into the top micro USB port, and plug in the HDMI cable adapter into the mini HDMI port. Plug it all into an HDMI monitor, a wall outlet, and power it on. At this login screen, key in Pi for the username and Raspberry for the password. Now we can start entering terminal commands. You can follow David Hunt's guide here and just start typing in all of the commands if you want, but I'm lazy and I would rather copy and paste as much as possible. So I'm going to enable SSH on the Pi and do all of this through a putty window on my main PC. So the command we want to enter is sudo raspi config. This is going to allow us to set up our Wi-Fi settings, enable the camera, and enable SSH. It's going to open the Raspberry Pi configuration interface. So from here, arrow down to option two, select M2, wireless LAN, and enter in your region. Then key in your Wi-Fi's SSID and password. Hit enter to finish. Then key down to option five, hit enter to P1 camera, and key left to yes. Hit enter, hit enter to accept the OK option, and back on this screen, key down to option 5 again. This time select P2 SSH and hit enter. Key left to select yes and hit enter. It will take a few seconds to enable SSH and then you'll see this. 
Hit Enter to accept the OK option. Now from this screen select Finish and it will prompt for a reboot. Select Yes and hit Enter. Allow the Pi to fully reboot. Again, that's username Pi and password Raspberry, all lowercase. And at the terminal prompt, type ifconfig and hit Enter. This will display the Pi Zero's IP address. Write this down if you don't think you'll be able to remember it, and head over to your main PC. From here, I'm using Windows and PuTTY for the following instructions. If you want to use not Windows and not PuTTY, that's cool. You do you. But it's up to you to know how to do that and make it not my problem. Many ran over. So download and install PuTTY. I'll put a link in the description. Launch PuTTY and type in the IP address of your Raspberry Pi Zero. Click on Open and with this pop-up dialog, select Yes. Now we can log into our Pi's terminal remotely with the username Pi and password Raspberry. And we can start entering the commands to make the magic happen. And again, I would like to remind everybody that this is David Hunt's project, so you can copy and paste most of these commands from his blog page on this project. We need to install git, so enter the following command. After that's done, change to your home directory by entering the command cd space slash home slash pi and clone David's git project with the git clone command. In the uvc-gadget directory, we need to create a systemd service. So enter the command sudo nano pywebcam.service. That will create a blank document. Now pay attention. I don't mean to sound stern here, but this is very important. The next part on David's page left me with a head scratcher that had me hung up for many hours. He supplies a block of text for the service, which looks like this but there's a small bit of text that's missing. It actually needs to look like this. After you've entered the proper text into Nano, key Control plus X, then key Y to save it and hit Enter. This will take you back to the main terminal and we'll need to copy the file that we just created to the system directory by entering this command. Then enable it by entering the systemctl enable command. Next, we need to edit the contents of two text files, the boot config and boot command line files. Type sudo nano slash boot slash cmd line dot txt and hit enter. At the very end of the only line in this document, right after the word root weight, add a space and add this parameter to the line. Hit control plus x and enter Y to save it. Key in sudo nano slash boot slash config dot txt. Go all the way to the bottom of the configuration file and directly below gpu underscore mem equals 128 key in dt overlay equals dwc2. Hit control plus x and enter Y to save the changes. Now we can build the UVC Gadget app. Change to the UVC Gadget directory by entering this CD command, then type make and hit enter. Now set up a new serial device with the following command. At this point, shut down your Pi by entering sudo shutdown zero. Unplug all of the cables from the Pi, and you should be able to plug in a micro USB cable to the top micro USB port of the Pi Zero and the other end into your PC. You can watch in your Windows Device Manager, and the camera should show up as UVC camera. If that happens, you'll know that you did everything right. If you get the error unknown USB device with device descriptor request failed, it's likely that you didn't add the UVC directory in the services file. Okay, so I think this is the moment of truth. This is what the camera looks like in use. This is the six millimeter lens. This is what I would consider the standard lens for uh, like a webcam type setup. Um, as you can see, there's a little bit of curvature going on right here. There's a little bit of fisheye, 
but I don't think it's too bad. So I'm not doing anything special with the lighting in here right now. I've just got a lamp on off to the side over here. And uh, I do notice that the camera does auto white balance. Um, and if there is a rapid change to color, it can uh, fluctuate in color a bit. And I've seen that in normal webcams too. So it's something that I'm not going to worry about. So this is the 6mm lens. This is something that um, I was expecting it to be super, super wide, but what I didn't take into account was the crop factor on this sensor. This is like a crop factor of 5.6 or 5.2, something like that. I did the math on this lens, and this is something like the equivalent of a 33mm lens on a full frame. So that's why it's not being just so blown out and extremely wide. Okay, so this is the 8 millimeter lens and again, nothing special with the lighting and this is cropped in a lot tighter. I'm at the same distance roughly that I was with the 6 millimeter lens, but um, as you can see, we're a lot more zoomed in and there is a lot less fish eye going on. There's like no fish eye going on with this at all. Um, I actually really like this lens a lot. You can see though that um, if I come up here and start messing with the focus, that's about where I was at, so my hand should be in focus now. It doesn't take much at all to really start getting out of, oops, that's the aperture. Doesn't take much to really start getting out of focus with this at all. So uh, let's see. But yeah, this is the 8mm lens. One thing I'm noticing is that this is auto white balancing quite a bit. Um, I was noticing it pretty heavy on the 25mm lens, but now I'm actually seeing it on all of these lenses. It's not as noticeable on the 6mm and the 8mm lens, but it definitely does happen. All right, so here's that 25 millimeter lens at the same distance away as the other two lenses, the eight millimeter and the six millimeter. And as you can see, this is very, very zoomed in. This lens has like an odd effect on the auto white balance that's going on. And I don't know how to actually configure the white balance of this camera. It may be in the code of the configuration file. I don't really know Linux well enough to dig into that. And um, I'm happy enough with the white balance on the other two lenses that it's not something that I'm going to touch. But if somebody else knows how to do that and you want to leave a comment below to let the rest of us know how to uh, fix the auto white balance in that, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, anyway, one of the things that I've noticed with this is that if you quickly change the color composition of the video, you'll see that the white balance goes pretty wonky. So you can see that I'm not even doing anything to change much and you can see that it's going from a more uh, blue tone to a red tone back to a, you know, and it kind of just does what it wants to do with that. But anyway, at this distance, this lens is unusable for this kind of work. So this is the 25 millimeter lens and I'm about 15 feet away from the camera right now. So I think this is about the closest you really want to be with this lens uh, to give you an idea of like the focal distance. Uh, Ollie and Spider-Man, they're practicing pretty good social distancing. They're about six feet away from me from where I'm at right now. So that's the kind of bokeh you can expect at this angle with that kind of distance in the background. However, this 25 millimeter lens isn't without its advantages. It makes an excellent video magnifying glass. So I've gone back to the six millimeter lens here because I think this is the lens that most people are gonna go for when they do this setup. Um, and what I've done is I've gone, I've set up a little bit better lighting for this. And um, I've gone into OBS Studio and um, I've played around with some color co correction, which that's a little bit dull, but I actually like it. I kind of prefer it. I, I don't want something quite so vibrant. That's just my personal taste. And I 
also applied this low contrast LUT. And as far as like a, a classic retro look, I think this is really cool. Um, it, it's just a matter of like what you're wanting to go for. But um, uh, here is back to default. And here's with color correction applied. And this is a low contrast LUT. And here's just the LUT without the color correction. And this is back to default. So actually I kind of, man, I don't know. Anyway, you've got a lot of options with this camera and I really think that it's a lot better than your standard plug and play USB webcam. If you still find all of this to be too overwhelming, I will be making two files available for download to all of my patrons on Patreon. One will be a document with all of the commands for easy copy and paste. This will be available to my tier one supporters and higher. And the second will be an image of this build that you can just download and flash with Etcher. And all of the work is already done. This image will be available to my tier two or higher supporters. Which reminds me, I would like to offer all of my sincerest thanks to all of my current Patreon supporters. If you would like to help out on Patreon, there will be a link in the description. Donations are appreciated, but never expected. The best way to support my work is to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, good luck with this project, and I'll see you next time.